This is a subject that I promise you I can only scratch the surface of it this morning. There's no way I can do justice to what I'm going to speak on in the amount of time that I have. But you know what I'm going to try with the Lord's help? Amen. Psalm 46, verses 1 through 4. If you found that, say amen. Amen. It says, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore will not we fear, though the earth be removed, and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, though the waters thereof roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with the swelling thereof, Selah. I want you to note this verse. There is a river. The streams whereof shall make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacles of the Most High. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we come to you this morning and again we praise you for your goodness, for your mercy upon us, Lord, for all of that you have done for us, Lord, and for what we know you're still going to do, dear God. Lord, I pray this morning that this message will touch the hearts of someone that is sitting here in our midst this morning, Lord, or someone that's watching for the service online today. Oh, God, may you be glorified in everything that we say and do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 You may be seated. As we've assembled here today on this 26th day of September 2021, I proclaim to each one of you today that those and those that are watching by Facebook, that God is good. Amen. God is good. Matter of fact, the title of my message this morning is The Goodness of the Lord. Is there anyone here today that can witness to the goodness of the Lord? Just raise your hand. Amen. Amen. As I look back over the last 30 years, uh, I can't help but see all of the good things the Lord has done for us and all of the hard places that He's brought us through in this church. Amen. When you pioneer a church, it's not the easiest thing to do, even with the blessings of the Lord flowing through you. There's been a lot of blood, sweat, tears that have gone into this ministry. And I promise you it's been bathed in an ocean of prayer as well. From our humble beginnings there uh, beside the train track in the old senior citizen building here in McEwen, uh, for the first month that we were assembled as a church. And then we moved on to the old Buckner Funeral Home building over on Highway 70 for about four and a half years until we moved into our current facility on December the 31st, 1995. I would say the Lord has brought us a mighty long way today. Amen. Then in 2014, we were able to add on the, the Family Life Center that you see sitting behind the church today. It's hard to comprehend with the attendance and the finances that we had in those early years uh, how we made it through all of those times. But I can testify that God has been a multiplier of the tithes and offerings that have been given to this church. Can somebody say amen? amen. He has always met our needs and that I give him praise for. Amen. 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 You all have been faithful to give to God's work and do what you could to see this work continue and to, to be faithful and to get it blessed. Amen. amen. But we have adopted a phrase around here some time ago. If it's God's will, then it's God's bill. Amen. amen. If it's God's will for something to take place, on this property, then it'll be God's bill that he'll take care of. And when I feel so blessed and so honored to have been your pastor for the last 17 and a half years. Amen. You have loved my family up. And I hope that you feel the love that we have back for you. Amen. I appreciate each one of you. I love each one of you. Amen. When churches and their pastors have that type of strong bond and relationship with each other, 
Amen. Then you're going to see a church move forward for the glory of God. You're going to see God bless the ministries of that church when the leadership and the congregation is in agreement one with another and, of course, in agreement with God as well. I want to say to you again, we love and appreciate each one, each family that's associated with this church. And I also want to say I appreciate each of the ones who watch us weekly online that are not within driving distance of this church. Amen. They're off in other states. Last weekend, we got to to meet, uh, uh, well, of course, we knew them, but some of you got to meet the Hubners uh, from Texas uh, that came through and and wanted to be in service with us live. And I appreciate that. Amen. Amen. We, We thank the Lord for each and every one. But we thank God for all of the blessings, the miracles, the healings, the salvations, and the deliverances. Amen. He is a faithful God, and I can tell you now, He hasn't exhausted His supply yet. Amen. Amen. Not only do I praise Him for what He's already done in our midst, but I also praise Him for what He's still going to do. Amen. I anticipate even greater blessings in the years to come in this church. Now, I say years because I don't know how much longer we have to be here in this church. Amen. The Lord could come this evening. He could come tomorrow. He could come next month. But He could come next year. And we just need to keep on keeping on, keep on working for the Lord until the Lord comes back for us. One thing I want us to pay close attention to is the Bible doesn't just say that God does good things. That's not what it says. It says that God is good. It's not just what he does, but it's who he is, and who he is will never change. Do you believe that? How many times have we said, isn't God good? Especially when we hear of someone that escaped a tragedy at the last minute. Maybe there was someone that was supposed to be on a plane that crashed. And at the last minute, their flight plans got changed and got rerouted to a a different flight. Boy, we like to say, isn't God good on something like that, don't we? Amen. But what about the person who uh, avoided that 12-car pileup on the interstate because their car wouldn't start that morning? So therefore, they were delayed. We still like to say, isn't God good for that, right? Amen. 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 But how about the individual that goes to the doctor and uh, they have respiratory issues and when they take that chest x-ray, they find a tumor in their lung and that tumor gets removed and and they get healed up. We, We like to say, well, God is good because that was found. I feel like one of those this morning, not with a tumor, but with uh, a a thyroid issue that was found when a chest x-ray was given to me. Amen. But regardless if everything is going our way or not, God is still good. That fact will never change. Church, we we can have confidence in God According to Psalm 46, look with me this morning back at verse number 1 and verse number 2. It says, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, will not we fear? I want to stop right there. Charles Spurgeon, and I know you've heard that name down through the, the course of history, made this comment. God is good, not because He causes things that seem or feel good to happen in our lives, but because in the midst of the storm, God comes closer to us than the storm could ever be. Did you get that? Can I read it one more time? Let me say that one more time. God is good... Not because he causes things that seem or feel good to happen in our lives, but because in the midst of the storm, God comes closer to us than the storm could ever be. Amen. 
We need to get that deep down in our spirit. Amen. Somebody said that I'm between a rock and a hard place. No. Let the rock, Jesus Christ, be between you and the hard place. Right? Yeah. Amen. Let the Lord be between you and what is so difficult in your life at this very moment. This is why we can say with absolute confidence that God is good. No matter how bad the storm is, no matter how much pain we experience, and no matter how different the outcome may be from what we prayed for, God is still good and He is working His perfect plan even though we may not see it at the time. Amen? Amen. How many know that all things will work together for the good of them who love the Lord, Amen. who are the called according to His purpose? We may not see it right now. I tell you, sometimes I can't see beyond the end of my nose of what's going on all around me, right? You're the same way. Don't laugh at me. You're the same way. You can't see what's going on any farther than the end of your nose right now. I've been there. I felt that. And I wondered, God, where are you leading me in this? Where am I going? What is going to happen in this situation? But you know what? As long as I keep my faith in God and my hand in that nail-scarred hand, I, I can tell you with assurance that God will see you through. He'll bring you through the problems and the situations that you are in at this moment. Amen. Amen. So God is with us. He's working His perfect plan even if we don't see it at the, that time. In the hardest moments of life, God comes close to us and He doesn't change. He doesn't falter. He doesn't fail. He doesn't quit. He doesn't leave. And He doesn't let us go. Thank God for that. God's goodness is not dependent on an outcome of a situation, whether good or bad. His goodness is not dependent on our emotions, whether we're happy or whether we're sad. God is not good just because we may have avoided some danger or tragedy in our life. But God is good because when the storms of life hit, and did you notice I said when, not if, because you will go through some storms in your life. You're not sheltered. You're not in a bubble. You will go through some storms. And it will help you to grow in the Lord if you allow it to. All right. But God is good because when the storms of life hit, He, God, comes closer to us than the storm could ever be. Notice that first part of that verse. It says, God is our refuge and our strength. What is a refuge? It's a condition of being safe or sheltered from pursuit, danger, or trouble. It's a safe retreat, a haven, a stronghold, a protection, if you will. Amen. We can run to God for refuge this morning. What about that word strength? Amen. Strength is our received power from up on high. It's not power that you have in yourself, but it's power that you receive from up above. His ever-present help in our time of need. He provides unlimited resources to each and every one of us. Amen? Amen. What is trouble? Boy, if you can't see trouble in this world today, you're blinded. You've got your blinders on, right? Trouble is to agitate, to disturb, to put into confused motion. But what does God say about times of trouble? Write these three scripture references down if you've got pen and paper there. Isaiah chapter 41 and verse 10. Isaiah 41 and verse 10. It says, Fear thou not... For I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee, yea, I will help thee. Yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my salvation. Do you see that God is with you, church? 
Amen. That verse right there should be proof to you. He said, I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee. I will help thee. I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. Write down Psalm 9, verses 9 and 10. It says, The Lord also will be a refuge for the oppressed, a refuge in times of trouble. And they that know thy name will put their trust in thee. For thou, Lord, has not forsaken them that seek thee. That's the key this morning, church. We've got to seek after the Lord. Seek Him for that time of refuge in times of trouble. Amen. Amen. That was Psalm 9, verse 9 and 10. Now let's do one more. Isaiah 26, verse 3 and 4. Thou will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee because he trusteth in thee. Trust ye in the Lord forever, for in the Lord Jehovah is everlasting strength. Somebody say amen. Amen. Back to our text in Psalm 46 verse 2. It says, therefore will we not fear. Fear. How many know that fear is not of God? It's not of God. Fear is thrown at you by the devil and when you accept fear and entertain it in your heart, it chips away at your faith. And without faith, the Bible says it's impossible to please the Lord. Amen. Amen. So you know what you've got to do? Fear and doubt go hand in hand. Fear and doubt go hand in hand because when they are in control of your heart, you stop believing in the refuge and the strength of Almighty God. That miracle working power that we so desperately need while we are in this old world. Amen. Amen. But if you have your Holy Ghost spiritual B12, oh, come on now, then faith will conquer your fears even if the earthquakes were destroying the earth all around you. Amen. And the mountains were falling into the sea or the storms become violent like a, a hurricane or a tsunami or a cyclone and destroy everything it touches, still I will not fear because God is my refuge this morning. Amen. Amen. Satan may throw every demonic trick he can think of at you from the book. But you don't have to fear for God is with you and God is good. Amen. 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 Look at verse number four with me this morning and we'll be finished. It says, There is a river, the streams whereof make glad, shall make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacles of the Most High. The city of God here refers to Jerusalem. But make note here that Jerusalem did not have a natural river. Jerusalem didn't have a natural river like some of the cities and the countries around them. So you say, well, how can you say that there is a river that's flowing through Jerusalem and to Jerusalem? Easy. Here's the word. The river is symbolic. It's a metaphor, if you will. For the continual outpouring of the sustaining and refreshing blessings of God which make the city of God like the Garden of Eden, if you will. Amen. In other words, God has a spiritual river that will bring refreshment and joy to God's people continually. Do you receive that this morning? Yes. Amen. God has a spiritual river that will bring refreshment and joy to God's people continually. Have you tapped into this supply in your own life this morning? Amen. Psalm 107 and verse 1 says, Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for He is good, for His mercy endureth forever. Can I say to you this morning that you and I both have failed the Lord at times. You and I both have failed the Lord at times. But God is patiently waiting for those who are 
unsaved especially, to come back to Him, to come to Him. And, and that's how, you know, how do we know that time is running out for that? Because He's soon going to return to take His children, the church, home to be with Him. Amen. Amen. Then we'll be in heaven for all of eternity. You talk about a homecoming. Church, that'll be a homecoming right there. Amen. Or should I say a home going? Yeah. Yeah. That might be the better term for it right there. A home going. Amen. You know what? I think about the old song that says, When the saints go marching in. Amen. Lord, I want to be in that number when the saints go marching in. Amen.